I'm Luke Beard. I'm Chris Gurney. I'm Riley Gunter. And I'm Nash Rainey. And we are the, the Backups. Backups. All right, let's jump right into the NBA. Uh, Steve Kerr signing a $35 million extension. I think it was about the highest paid uh, NBA coach ever. Extension, so. Something like that. It's something ridiculous. How many years is it? Like two? Two years, yeah. Two year extension. That's unreal money. That's big. Like, that's, that's player money. Pretty exactly. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a very solid role player on a championship yeah. team. Yeah. Opinions on Steve Kerr? I feel like. I don't know if he deserves it right now. That's my whole thing. Yeah. I, I think he does deserve it based on his career. Where they're currently standing, I'm not paying them $35 million. I mean, they've, they've been hot since before the Austin, before the All-Star breaking, coming out the All-Star. Sure, but not $35 million. Right? I mean, that's, that's unreal. Yeah, I think that's it's, the best coach they ever had. Yeah, I, I feel one like of the best coaches of all time. So yeah. he was going to have to get paid to get yeah, retained. Like, so I understand why they did it. But they need to see some more improvements as they're doing right now. They need to keep improving what they're doing. Not that it's like not understandable, but I feel like I feel like hearing this back when they were like winning championships, I would have made it would have made a little bit more sense to me. It still we. makes sense. I said we. Okay, I'm partially worse. When did you Lewis, start Lewis, watching Lewis. the Warriors? 2016 when he, when y'all started winning championships. Was it when Kevin Durant? Yeah, I was a big Kevin Durant. Oh, that's my favorite yeah, player. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy loved Thunderstruck. Yeah. I actually yeah. never watched that movie, so. Oh, it's fire. It's it's a good watch. It's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, NBA standings. I mean, Boston's still in first in the East. Yeah, eight as games expected. Win yeah. Too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, Boston's. It looks like no one's touching that top spot in the East. Yeah, no. Realistically. I mean, I mean nearly eight games ahead. That's, it, yeah. it just doesn't look like they'll give up that kind of lead, especially at this point in the season with just how, like, it would take a lot of losing for yeah, them to, yeah. to drop out of that top spot. And it's the Cavs very, just lost to a Sixers list, or an uh, Embiid list Sixers team. I'm pretty sure. They, they beat them Friday. That might be crazy. You, you remember, we was watching that yeah. game Friday. No, they lost. They lost eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did lose yeah. again. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, for some reason, I'm thinking. They also lost to the Magic, best team in the league, and they're playing right now, it looks like, against yeah. the Mavericks. Yeah. So, there you go. I'm just looking at other teams I think can make some noise in the East. I think Milwaukee. Always yeah, Milwaukee, yeah. of course. I think without Embiid, the Sixers are lost. Uh, I mean, the Knicks, I think. They, they're injury prone right now. They'll make some noise, but I don't think they'll make enough noise to make it past, you know, probably not even to the conference finals. The Heat are always going to be in that discussion. Uh, the Pacers are another team that I think can make some noise in the playoffs. I think I picked them as my uh, my dark horse this year, actually. If I remember correctly. I like the Pacers, but I think they're missing. They're still missing some pieces. Yeah, they are. So far. They're definitely missing some pieces, but I think they could make right. it somewhere. Uh, the Magic, I think, are a fun team that aren't going to make a ton of noise in the playoffs, but they will make the playoffs, I think. They made the playoffs, but I, I doubt they're going to be. And then the Bulls and Hawks. Really they, just shot. they just did. Yeah, they're. That's, that's what my thing with the plan, like nine, nine and ten. Shot. The Hawks might make it, but the nah, Bulls, I don't, I don't think, think the Hawks gonna make it. They don't. I mean, these, these. Not this. They're just they're the nine and ten seed. Like yeah. they're not particularly <laughs> exciting, so I, I wouldn't see that either of them going very far. Yeah. I, I, f I feel like this. I'm just. I don't trust this Bucks team. I feel like with a lot of the. That's fair. They have the talent on the court clearly, but like just some of these. The, the organizational chemistry, decisions, the coaching changes, yeah. on firing Doc Rivers, firing a coach like halfway through the season when you're a pretty good team. It just, I don't know. It seems, I, I just, yeah, it's I like can't they don't really know what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. They, they're doing, they're doing something, but I, I cannot figure it out for the life of me. So I just bad vibes from them, and I just, I don't know. I hate the Celtics. The Celtics are the worst. Uh, thankfully, there's no Celtics fans here because they probably wouldn't like me saying that. But I no, mean, that's, that's not a joke. That's supposed to be aimed at me. That is a Riley only joke. But, no, yeah, it is a Riley only joke. <laughs> we all support our teams no matter what. Yeah. We all pick our teams to win all the games. All the games. I got it right though. It doesn't matter. I'm Which so, is crazy. I'm so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be Three. celebrating my team losing the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. He's excited. Okay. Yeah. Imagine awesome. watching your team. That's some Cowboys activity Super right Bowls. there. Neither of my team can win Super Bowls. If we're saying both are my teams, nah. just, to, just to make it just clear. Neither. We, we all heard that. Yeah. You said Neither I slipped up. Teams. What you mean? You got to, so, you, so you're a Cowboy and a 49ers fan? Uh, just a Niners fan. There, aren't they rivals? Yeah, they're yeah, they, 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 they biggest rivals. They don't like bro. each other. Yeah, I don't. 
I can't say I don't care for Dallas, but my family lives there. But mm, I guess. Yeah. What? You can say that. Yeah, you can say. Oh, that. So then I don't care for the Cowboys. Okay. I don't know yeah. why it took us this long to get here. Yeah, you could. You like, miss it. I have an uncle who lives in Tampa. I don't care for the Buccaneers. Right. <laughs> I hate the Buccaneers. Like, no, it's it's not because your family lives there. You can't say you dislike the team. It's you can still dislike yeah. a team. And I think that's just your rival, your biggest rival. But I want to say biggest rival. <laughs> that is the 49ers. The Niners. Who else are they rivaling with? The Seahawks in 2013. We're still on that. Like it's their biggest rival been the Cowboys since the, the 80s. That was a really. tough year. Why are we, why are you we get this thing on 2013? Okay, okay. We're making fun of you. Okay. So we usually get paid. <laughs> Western Conference. Back on track. Yeah. Western I mean, Conference, Pinions, Pinions uh, vibes. I think, I think the Thunder jumped the T-Wolves soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're tied right now. I think the Thunder are going to take that number one seat soon. Uh, but I do think Timberwolves are a good team. Yeah. Uh, the Nuggets, I think they will probably jump to second by playoff time. I think the yeah. T-Wolves dropped probably three or four. Realistically, I don't know about four. I think three, three. Though. I think three, but three. it's so close, it's hard to tell. Oh, I think, absolutely. I think the top four is cemented. Yeah. No one moves out of this top four. The Clippers stay, probably at four. Yeah. Uh, the Nuggets, I think, bounce to two. The Thunder, I think, bounce to one, and then the T Wolves, I think, bounce down to three. And I think, hmm, I'm trying to look at this. I think the Suns probably stay in. Yeah. You, you don't if think they can stay healthy? You don't think the Suns can can pass the Clippers? Nah. Four games? Uh, three now. Huh? The three game difference between them, Clippers three? and Suns. Oh, that was four. So it's a. Oh. No, I, they still. Uh, I think the Pelicans drop a few games they need to win. I think the Mavericks move into that sixth spot. Yeah. I think the play in we'll see is going to be probably King seven still. I would say Pelicans at eight. Warriors 9 and Lakers 10, honestly. The Lakers probably beat the Kings. They move into the play. Or, well, I think Lakers make the playoffs. Yeah. I don't see a, a world where they're not going to make it. I agree with that. I think the it's in the cards. Mm-hmm. We'll uh, probably get a, a Warriors and Lakers. Uh, remix. Yeah, it probably will be Warriors and Lakers, but I really want both of those teams to miss. But that's not happening. No, it won't happen, but I think it would be interesting to see a bunch of teams that haven't won it besides the Nuggets, you and know. I'll be honest, like the last time it was no Bron or, or Curry in the playoffs, that was so boring. I'm gonna be honest. That was, I can't yeah, that's true. That was boring. That was boring. Forgot about that. That was bad basketball. That was really bad basketball. <laughs> I really forgot about that. Yeah, that <laughs> was flashbacks. That was boring. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. flashbacks to bad basketball. Wasn't that when the Suns made it? That was a fun series. Yeah, no, nah. I, I do want the Suns to – I still want Devin Booker to get a ring. I want, yeah, I want to see the Suns. Yeah, I, just, I just like – I want Chris Paul to get a ring. But, be, but I, th- I think the person out of the team I'm rooting for the, out of the West the most is probably the Clippers. Just because all my favorite, like, players play for that team. So, all right, Kawhi. That's a fair pick. It's a, good, it's a good team. I'd say I'd either go with Sacramento or OKC. I think it would be fun to see OKC get one. I think they have a really fun core. Yeah. I think Minnesota would be cool, too. Minnesota, I, I, I just like it. Yeah, I would like to see a video of, like, you know, Minnesota fans celebrating, making the playoffs, maybe some players jumping on tables and stuff, yeah. something I've never seen Like before. maybe yeah. tossing a jersey in yeah. celebration yeah, yeah, yeah. to the crowd. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if y'all have ever seen something like that. I haven't. I can't even imagine something like that. That just seems so out of the ordinary. I would say a guy like Patrick Beverly, but he's not on my team, unfortunately. Yeah, it's that one he makes. I mean, I mean Bradley, well, you're, the, you're the resident... Warriors fan, do you think this team has what it takes to surpass the Lakers? I'm not really sure. Oh. I mean, do you don't know anything about your team? It's not a surprise. Name that. three Warriors players that aren't Curry, Clay, or Jeremy. I don't even think you need to include that third thing. Tomenga, Wiggins. I was going to say I someone, but he, he, le- he left. He's on the Knicks this year. Who? Uh, DiVincenzo. He just tackled a guy the other night, actually. I can name three. Come on, man. Podjimski? Oh, You're not going to go with Podjimski? Yeah, uh, uh, they don't have a center. GP3? Oh, yeah. He's back there. He's yeah. back there. Yeah, he came back, what, last year? Yeah, last year. From Portland? Yeah. What a silly trade. I don't know why they got rid of him in the first place. Just re-signed the dude. Uh, let's let Nash talk about something that I'm sure is 
he's not used to talking about anything good on the show, it feels like. Right. Talk about the Hornets, man. Oh, my God. It is. This is a. This, since the trade deadline, this has been a completely different Hornets team. We're 6-1 and one in our last seven. We are on fire. We've only lost one game. That was to the Warriors, which was, I mean, we watched it. It was pretty sloppy basketball. <laughs> that was, but, that was bad. but, you know, overall, this is actually a, a really good team, considering what we were and not only how we're playing on the court, but some of our, our roster moves. It's just, it's exciting to see Hornets basketball. I'm, I'm not used to going two games in a row, getting a notification on my phone that we won. It's, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like this is what it must feel like to win the in-season tournament, you know, the greatest tournament. Um, but, like, actually, for real, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's something that Hornets fans really haven't experienced in a while and Ever. also not Ever. really much yeah. historically. We don't really win, win. six out of yeah, every seven games. You it's could very, just stop at win. Yeah, we don't really win. Well, who's at the arena a couple of weeks? I didn't see nothing in the banners. Like. They had two American, jerseys hung. American flag. One Canadian of them flag. was from the WNBA team. Yeah, I forget who was on the... Uh, I don't know who the other one was. It was a... I remember the reasoning. It was, it was yeah, very it was sad. a role player in the 90s and yeah. early 2000s to play. But, I mean, it's actually... It's fun to watch this new look team. And I think there's a, there's a different energy here, with, uh, especially with some of these newer players. The Grant Williams era. The Grant Williams era. Build the pole. Um, hang that banner, six and one. Yes, yeah, hang the banner, six and one in our last seven. Six and one in the Grant Williams era. In the Grant Williams era, of course. But, I mean... It's one of those things where I'm used to Charlotte sports teams making big moves in the offseason or at the deadline, and they're just not really paying off, at least in the short term. Trying to think of um, I mean, Stephon Christian McCaffrey Davis. trade. Oh, uh, that was not a big move for y'all. For the Niners, it was huge. It was our, it was our, it was our number one player. I know, but like for y'all, I wouldn't say it was like a, a big move that was going to pay off for y'all. Oh, I feel like that was just y'all got fleeced. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'll rephrase it. Or the DJ used... Moore trade that y'all got fleeced on. Or signing Stefan Diggs, which just didn't work what? out. Uh, yeah. It's got a list uh, going, man. Oh, sorry. I thought... Uh, yeah, Diggs was a Niner. Or a Niner, Niner Panther for, like, a season. You know what? Talking about Stefan. I'm serious. He's talking about Stefan Gilmore? Yeah. I am talking about Stefan yeah. Gilmore. <laughs> I just blanked. My bad. I would, I would know if Stefan Diggs played Panthers football. I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm literally insane. Uh, uh, Adam Thielen. Hey, he, he, he played well. He played yeah. well. Uh, hmm. Drafting Jonathan Mingo in the second round. And Bryce Young. Um, yeah, well, well, number one QB in the class. Uh, not getting a tight end. Dean Thomas. Or any other. Position. Regardless, I'm not Ooh, used. Ooh, coaching changes. I'm not used to Charlotte. Hiring Ron Rivera. I mean, that's not. I'm not. Coaching. I'm not used. To oh, when y'all traded Kemba, that was kind of silly. If we're talking about like Charlotte in enough. general. Well, they trade him. Well, okay. When they let no, they traded him. It was a signing trade. Oh, it was a signing trade. Yeah, for Gordon Hayward. He was about to go anyway, though. Which. Didn't work either. Yeah, it didn't, didn't go out. It didn't work out for both teams. I mean, David did. Tepper becoming owner of the Panthers as well was pretty bad. For overall. Ooh, just being the Bobcats, that didn't work. I don't have to keep going, man. I'm just thinking. It's like running itself. I'm just, I, you keep going. Regardless, uh, overall. Yeah, I lost Del Curry at one point, I'm pretty sure, to Toronto. I, I think that was I issue. am used to seeing Charlotte. Oh, letting Dwight Howard walk when he was playing well for the Hornets. That was silly. I mean, that wasn't game changing. Hey, hey man, yeah. Dwight was hooping for the Hornets. But that wasn't going to change their team at all. Man. It was helping them win games? A few? A few games, and they, they was. Yeah, like, that was more than what they normally win. In 10th place in the East. Okay. The same place? Well, they're not they're really. in 13th now. But, I mean, hey, that, that ain't helping them make the playoffs. I'm not no, used to Charlotte sports teams making good I mean, moves that pay off in the playoffs. short term. And this is probably the first time, at least in the last few years. Perfect. That that is immediately paid off for us, and it's it's just it's it's nice to have hope again. We haven't I haven't had hope for any Charlotte sports team since probably before the draft last year. So it's nice having a team that's who did you have hope for? Bryce well, Young. actually, it kind of paid off. Number one QB in the class, Bryce Young. Dog, you're gonna get your mic muted. Right. But yeah, yeah no, it's it's this is a this is a, a this new look Hornets team. Is playing better, and I'm happy to see. It. <laughs> and I think, like I said before, uh, a little bit ago, 
you know, I, I said I could see this team making some noise coming out of the All-Star break. Maybe not a playing spot, but definitely improve. better yeah. better basketball. And yeah. I feel like we're playing that. Yeah, yeah they do it. And we're not, we're not like a game off of worst record in the East. So that's also very reassuring. Do you make the play-in? I mean. At the position you're in. I think I, we're, we're, 10, games we're 10 games back. That's a lot. And I really games. like this. I really like this Hornets team, but yeah. I, I do not see us. Okay. <laughs> you're 10 games up. back in about 25 games left, Susan? Ish. It's a, I mean, there's 57. So yeah, about, about 25 games. I think we'll play better. I don't think we'll play catching up a 10 game deficit better, yeah. but we'll definitely play better. Just hopefully all this translate to the next, next season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the future because it looks like we should be a little bit better. I'm like, hopefully. Build the pole. Build the pole. The pole. All right, let's, let's move to the Premier League. Uh, I feel bad for always letting Nash start with a direct turnaround from what he was just talking about. Nash, you're really happy a second ago. You want to just skip it? Nah, yeah, I got to talk about this. I need to talk about this. Right, so, it out. this past weekend was probably, I would probably, I would, no, I, I wouldn't probably say, I will say that. This was a probably, probably surely, I can't even speak, I'm so distraught. This was a make or break weekend for us. We had a game against <laughs> Crystal Palace, which, like I said, was definitely a little bit more winnable than our previous games against some top clubs, Arsenal, Liverpool. You know, it was a winnable one, just like kind of, sort of <laughs> bless you, thank you. Like our matches against Sheffield or Brighton, those, you know, it, this Crystal Palace game was winnable for us, and we got beat 3 0. I can't argue and with I, that because we drew to y'all. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, so losing to Crystal Palace 3 0, I, I do not see a situation where this Burnley team escapes relegation, which I know I've been saying this whole season the title charge starts soon. It's over. But it might just be over. Um, and this is a tough loss, and I think that's all I really Do you want. feel sick? You would never say it's over. I said it's almost over. Get the championship it's title. Like it's over. Basically over. It's not, it's like 99% over. I'm still holding out hope. So it's 1%. It's 1% one, 1 back. It's hard to be, it's hard to say, you know, we're so back when you lose 3-0 to Crystal Palace. It's hard to say we're so back when you're Burnley, just generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. So, but that's I mean, unfortunate. I n maybe next year, or maybe this year. I, you know, we can start winning. Maybe what next year? Well, maybe uh, promotion. Like, what are we thinking? Well, if we get relegated, probably number one in the championship promotion. If we don't get relegated, probably. I could definitely see at least a Europa League spot. That's <laughs> Europa. I just, you know, we gotta, we gotta get, you know, playoffs. Off. That's crazy. Jumping, we jumping. We talking about playoffs. Cap. But yeah, I mean, do we see a Burnley treble run next year? I could see a Burnley treble run in like two, three years. Like, I'm not going to be unrealistic about it. Yeah, maybe if you're doing like FIFA manager mode, but. Uh. Yeah, uh, well, I got fired in FIFA manager mode, so. You did? Yeah. Again? Do you remember? Oh, I thought you were saying you got fired no, no, again. I was about to. Oh I learned gosh. my mistakes, but getting fired for Burnley in a video game was definitely humbling. Where'd you end up at? Sheffield. Sheffield. That's what I thought. And I actually, by that point in time, I had learned what I was doing, so I started playing well. Won the cup. Uh, but it, it took me a season. It helps. Won all four trophies, and you're still on the brink of getting fired. Yeah, they really did not like it. Yeah. I, I guess, you know. Skipping out on those interviews, man. I just lost in a chess game while you were talking about Burnley. I'm going to be so honest. I was locked in, and I, I lost by a second. Uh, so Arsenal defeat Newcastle 4-1. Uh, we're so back. That's all I have to say. We are the best team in Premier League football, probably in European football, uh, ever, I feel like, you know. Yeah. No one has the club success we've had. Uh, no one's had the club success we've had. We're the best team to ever wear red. Uh, uh, England bowl. runs through us. Another bowl face mark. Um, that's a bona fide scrub. Uh, Best striker of all time. Oh. Mm. Best gaffer of all time. Yeah, so we're just lying. Best. I feel like lying. You're right, Ted Lasso. I, Ted Lasso, obviously. Or I just, the Wunderkind. Or the Wunderkind. Uh, I just, I feel like we don't lie on this show, at least I don't. So I feel like this. I mean, anything else to add to the best team ever resume? Probably gonna, bottle, probably gonna bottle the league like last year. I mean, we're even gonna be in yeah. the position where we can bottle the league. 
<laughs> All right, Riley, you go ahead, man. Surprise, surprise. Another painful watch on a Saturday morning of Brighton football or soccer. It makes sense, you know, we have nine draws in the entire season, most of any team in the Premier League, and it's against Everton, who was facing relegation a week ago. Like, man, I can see if it feels like Chelsea or something. Like, hey, that's Chelsea, but, but Everton? Everton? And we had to equalize in the 95th <laughs> minute. That was painful. Cause I'm glad we got the header off the corner. It was... Dude. Everton Y'all almost lost to Tim Howard's old team. I wouldn't even show my... I don't even... Yeah, I don't even know Everton as a team. Like, where, 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 where even is Everton? Right across the street from the Lewis. Uh, <laughs> decor <laughs> decor is pretty good. Just making pretty up good. Yeah. You, just made right. up. you just made them. Throwing up, throwing yeah, up. It's, uh, it's... Johnson's good. Okay, that's, that's making up. But uh, it's going to be a tough Smith. month moving forward. You know, we play Liverpool and Man City back to back. So that's going to be a tough two weeks on the show. Cause Maybe y'all are going to get relegated. Maybe you'll See, be in relegation by no, this No, no. By this We're time not, next year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Nah, we're making we're making big moves in the off season. That Matoma fellow is no longer <laughs> playing. Yeah, he. Me, that's bro. painful. Yeah, that that that's, that's a big loss, yeah. especially especially moving forward in like Europe competition. Well, like it's just not going to be moving forward very much. But you don't know that. We could, we could we could we shake it up. We're getting a lot of players back. I can I can recognize relegation ball. You guys got it. <laughs> you have what it takes. I'm an expert. Okay, All so right, Cr <laughs> Chris, Crystal's going down before we do. <laughs> it just had a dominant 3-0 win. Against, against Burnley, you're 19. Really, you're a really tied. good team. Wow. Against a Premier League team. Chris? I mean, what y'all want me to say? Y'all were not the best team that game. Van Dyke. Uh, for, Virgil? Virgil Van Dyke. Me, 80 me. percent of that game, Chelsea was playing better than Liverpool. Hey, that's what's up, but who won? That's true. I, I, it's like Chelsea let Van Dyke get a header. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like first, and then they called it back. His point that who won? Liverpool. I'm not upset. I'm just. Like, I don't understand how you could not mark him for a second Van time. On well, it's Chelsea. Yeah, it's Chelsea, bro. Like they don't know ball. It's also how do you pay a billion dollars for a team and lose to a bunch of teenagers? Teenagers, like like they, they Liverpool's play. I thought we Nunes was, was out. Salah was out. Yeah, your B team. Yeah, we had Pretty much. really a C team. Like, I didn't even think we were going to win that game. I said, oh, Darwin Nunez and, and something like that. I'm like, oh, it is what it is. It's just, it's just a uh, terrible outcome. I was at least no, Diaz, Diaz had a good game. He was, he was the shining light for Liverpool. Yeah. And notable, uh, Man City defeated Luton Town today 6-2. Erling Haaland had five goals, and Kevin De Bruyne had five assists. Scary. Not a shocker. I mean. Just, I mean... He had a bad game last week, Holland did, so I guess he heard criticism and was like, I'm going to drop five goals on Luton Town. But that was impressive. You don't really see a player scoring that many That's goals. That's a lot of goals. That is. It is. All right, Elimination Chamber. Any takeaways from the show? Anything you want to talk about real quick? Just like what, what's going through our minds? I mean, the winner, I pretty much. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it I, was forecast. Yeah, I didn't. Personally, get to watch it, but from what I heard, the, the men's elimination chamber was a letdown, and the women's was a lot better. I heard the women's was a banger. Yeah. I feel like, it's, it's, at least so far, 2024 has definitely been, at least I feel like there's been a lot more big, entertaining women's matches than there are yeah. men's. The Royal Rumble, and now this. Yeah. Like, they're really showing out. Um, I mean, I think. First and foremost, I think it was such a cool venue, and it was really cool to see. You know, obviously. When the WWE goes international, I think it's always fun to see kind of the crowds and the reaction and the whole culture around it. And it, it was fun seeing Australia. I thought the Waller effect with Cody and Seth was pretty good. Um, the women's elimination chamber was good. I was a little bit surprised that Becky won. Not because she isn't that caliber of wrestler. It just <laughs> it wasn't something I was really like. It's not what I was hoping for, I guess. Right. So I wasn't expecting it. Uh, the tag match was good. Predictable. I mean, it was yeah, it was the tag match. Uh, the men's chamber was, yeah. and the, I think Rhea Ripley in the main event was just fantastic. That was just the crowd was really behind her, which you is kind of surprising to see. You know, she's supposed to be a bad guy, yeah. but like people, you know, yeah. no one was gonna. Two play. Australians battling it out. Yeah, the way she started that match was pretty cool, or that early move where she did the uh, 
she had kind of like an arm drag situation. She didn't drag it, but she uh, had her like in a wrist lock. Or she had her on, mm -hmm. and she went for a uh, <clears throat> like a hurricane rano off the top rope, like a springboard hurricane rano. You saw it, you know. Yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive because I've never seen her do something like that. I thought that was cool. It didn't work, but I thought it was cool. Uh, I mean, yeah, I heard the women's chamber was a lot better, more spots. I saw some of the men's chamber, and it, it felt like more of a setup match. It was all storyline. Yeah, yeah, and it seemed like a lot of people didn't want to get, get injured, risk getting hurt or anything. Before. Yeah, especially with everyone getting hurt now. I mean, that makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. You want to be careful. And all these guys are going to have big matches against each other heading into WrestleMania anyway. Yeah. I'm sure we'll see Drew fight at least three of these guys or something. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I hope most of this leads to a, a ladder match at uh, WrestleMania for the U.S. title with all the guys who were in this match. Yeah. yeah Kyle I don't know if Paul attack uh, Randy Orton. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's, almost, it's almost a situation where there's, like, there's too much good talent where you, like, you know, it's almost like you, you need a ladder match or, like, a five-man just to, because there's so many – High, high caliber people. Oh, no, LA Knight has to win the title. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Has to. Yeah. I, That's been yeah. the agenda for over a year now. And if yeah. that doesn't happen, I'm not going to be mad. Just disappointed. I'm just going to be a little sad. Sad. Because if it ends up being a one-on-one -on -one with AJ Styles, it's going to be a good match. It'll be fun. But they could do so much more. Yeah. Which yeah. is that ladder match. Yeah. 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 And it's like... Especially with guys like Randy, who haven't been in ladder matches recently, dude, with his back injury and everything. It's like WWE has to start, you know, putting their uh, putting their superstars in positions they're, you know, they're not comfortable. It's my favorite yeah, saying. Right. Right. But uh, that's just something WWE has to do. They have to, because we haven't really gotten great ladder matches at Mania recently. No, I mean, I haven't seen one since the, the Hardys one. Yeah. The tag match. And the Daniel Bryan, the one he won the IC title man. That was. WrestleMania 31, that was pretty that was good. A long time ago. Or the Zack Ryder IC title one, that was fun. But like, probably since the Hardys, we haven't really seen a great ladder match at Mania. Yeah. Mania normally has really good ladder matches when you put them on there. I mean, first one that comes to mind is, I want to say it's Mania 13. I might be off. It was uh, Razor, Ramon, and Shawn Michaels oh, for the Intercontinental yeah. title. Fantastic match. But it's like, WWE always has consistently good ladder matches. Right. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think the last one, now that I'm thinking, I think the last one was the one at the COVID WrestleMania. Oh, where yeah. Where it was, yeah. I think it I was that. maybe Kofi, John Morrison, and... Yeah, I remember that. Maybe Cesaro or someone for the tag titles, but it was a triple threat, like one-on-one-on-one. -on -one -on -one, oh, one yeah. Because someone had caught COVID. Yeah, yeah, because it was the... It was... Uh, Everything Usos, was yeah. yeah. Usos, Miz and Morrison, and then... New Day. Yeah, New Day. But it was only one from each. Yeah. Rep it was that was a good match, though. It was fun. It was, it was fun matches. Yeah. Just goofy. But... I mean, yeah, I'd, I would hope that's what happens from Elimination Champions. We get a ladder match. Yeah. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Uh, let's move to overtime, Chris. So, I mean, rebuild complete. We won a Super Bowl. It took three tries, but, you know, we finally got it. Drake May stepped up. Stepped up. Will Nivers was playing garbage at the beginning of the season, so I had to put Drake May in. Tajay Spears won a Super Bowl MVP. He had 224 rushing yards, like three touchdowns. No, that's the the other. The, yeah, he was second running back. Uh, that played behind Derrick Henry. He pretty good. Crazy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know he's from. I got rid. Of, yes, I got rid of Derrick Henry. For him. Yes, he's, he's been. Good. Yeah, he played last year, didn't he? A yeah. good bit. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, so yeah, he played probably. Beat the Packers, so that that. Ooh. I, I hate I had to do it, but I had I had. It's to bittersweet it. when yeah. you have to be your own team. Yeah. Uh, moving to mine, uh, just a little rundown of uh, how some of our teams are doing in the Europe competition. Can't really talk about Nash's team since, you know, if you're in a relegation zone, you can't really compete in Europe. Uh, let's talk about Champions League. Luke's team, Arsenal, is the only one there. A little bit of a surprise, losing to FC Porto. They're a, we'll good, back. They're a good team. I think, I think Arsenal will probably win, like, 2-0 uh, in the next game. We... we. Or they lose, like, we the past few years. <laughs> and then both me and Chris's teams are in the Europa League. Oof. Liverpool is playing Sparta Praha. I think that should Perfect. be it. I pronounce it. <laughs> Those other teams they let in your competitions? Oh. So, Sorry, they play real clubs like Porto. So <laughs> I think that's an easy one for uh, Liverpool. Where, where's Sparta from? In Greece. 
I figured that was going to be yeah, a yeah, good like a boost, uh, team. And then Brighton, Brighton was a little bit unlucky, but I think it's probably the best match okay. we could have gotten in entertainment besides AC Milan. And it's uh, AS Roma. I think it'll be an interesting matchup seeing Paulo Dybala, Romelu Lukaku face up against Jao Pedro, our Brazilian striker. Pascal Gross, the best center mid in the Premier League. I think it'll be an interesting matchup. There's no way we're hyping up. Oh, and it just to be a draw. Job pick. Okay. I thought you were going to say Pascal Gross, because there's facts <laughs> behind that. He's better rated than Odegaard this season, by far. Bro. Okay. That's facts. Bro. $3 million for him, and he's putting up those numbers. Bro. This on. season, for Odegaard is. Thank you. All right, man. All right, Nash. Okay, so. Um, I was going to talk about it earlier, but I couldn't think of anything, and I think this, this is also something that's unique to me. But, you know, this was my first elimination chamber, so I wanted to see it live. I wanted to watch the whole, you know, get the whole experience. So I did the incredibly stupid thing of staying up until 5 a.m. Yep. to watch elimination chamber. And while it was entertaining, and I, I, it was fun watching it live. It wasn't staying up to it wasn't worth staying up. And I didn't stay up till five because that's when it started. I stayed up till probably I'd say 7.30. And when I noticed, not only was I very, very tired, but the men's match wasn't very good and the sun was out, I made the executive decision of yeah, going to bed so that, and then rewatching the rest of it after I woke up. Uh, so choice. I would say it's one of those things where I was, I'm glad I did it. I thought it was fun, but Never again. Never again. Never again. I Unless can, it, now WrestleMania. I Wrestle, just, oh, WrestleMania, obviously. But WrestleMania. any non-WrestleMania, I'm just going to take a nap. Maybe the Rumble. Yeah. Oh, dude. Either way, will not, hopefully, will not be staying up the full time. Maybe sleeping before would yeah. be smart. And then uh, I want to talk about the NASCAR series, uh, or the Cup Series race that ended this weekend. Uh, the Ambetter Health 400 in Atlanta, Hotlanta. Uh, Daniel Suarez taking the win by .003 seconds over second place over, uh, I want to say it's Ryan Blaney. Yeah, I know ball. Uh, it's Ryan Blaney, who I think was .004 above Kyle Busch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I think it was Kyle. Yeah, it was Kyle. Straight from cars. It was, uh, yeah. It, if Kyle Busch could have just stuck his tongue out, would have gotten in that tie. I really... When I was watching it, I thought Blaney had won. Yeah. When I had seen it, the overhead, it looked like Blaney had gotten past Suarez. But if you look at the side by side, you see Suarez like the tip of his hood is over. It was absurd. Yeah. I just thought that was a cool ending. Yeah. Where where did you say that took place? Uh, Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, that's Georgia. what I thought. Yeah, I just I just didn't hear the first time, so I thought. Never heard of Atlanta. Well, I just I didn't hear you the first time, so I thought I'd. Ask it's like two and a half hours away. Yeah, I I know what it is. Falcons, Hawks. Yeah. Rattles. Yeah, I know what Atlanta is, yeah. I was just making Former sure. Braves. What's the Thrashers, man? I heard, name, I heard that name in a while. The Braves, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lil John, Usher. Uh, uh, career start now. Um, Amigos. You know, Atlanta. Cheesy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, Hotline had a good uh, NASCAR ending. I'd call it a hot ending, honestly, in, uh, in Atlanta. But yeah, that's all. Anyone else? No? No. Uh, to anyone tuning in from Hotlanta, thank you. Uh, to anyone tuning in from anywhere, thank you. Uh, we will see you all next week. Bye.